this video, we will discuss how to safely set up and light a Bunsen burner. Bunsen burners produce a single open flame and are used mostly for higher temperature tasks, such as conducting flame tests or heating a ceramic crucible. Before we start assembling, let's first take a closer look at the Bunsen burner. Starting from the top, this tubing is called the barrel. This is where the flame will be produced. Down here is the collar, which wraps around the bottom of the barrel. There is a small air hole on the side of the collar that allows for air to enter the burner. As the flame is produced by a combustion reaction between natural gas, methane, and oxygen, supplying sufficient airflow ensures a complete and hot flame. The flow of the air can be adjusted by twisting the collar, which will adjust the temperature of the flame accordingly. At our bench, we have a nozzle labeled gas. This nozzle provides the natural gas that we will be using to produce the flame. We will attach tubing here, which will extend from this nozzle to our burner's gas intake. The last thing we will need to produce a flame is a flint striker. This will create a spark to ignite the flame. To create a spark, push the metal stick towards the inside of the striker and slide it along the metal piece. It is always a good idea to test out the striker before setting up the burner to make sure that we are comfortable with creating the sparks. Some burners also have a gas valve, which allows us to adjust the flow of natural gas and the size of the flame. That said, most burners in our lab do not have this gas valve. However, we can still adjust the flame size by turning the gas outlet nozzle on our workbench. Which part of the Bunsen burner can we use to adjust the flow of the air into the burner? As mentioned before, the collar, which is located at the bottom of the barrel, can be adjusted to control the air intake and the temperature of the flame. Before we start to assemble and light our Bunsen burner, let's talk about safety. In chemistry labs, our utmost priority is always our and our lab mates' safety. When using a Bunsen burner, extra caution should be taken as we are working with an open flame. Before we light the burner, we should ensure that all hair is kept back and all flammable materials such as notebooks and organic solvents are kept at a far distance. Is this experimenter ready to start her Bunsen burner assembly? If not, what must she change before continuing? Now, let's start the assembly of the Bunsen burner. First, we will want to check the gas nozzle. Any time a Bunsen burner is not in use, we want to make sure that the gas nozzle is off and no gas is leaking into the room. We do not want to turn on the nozzle until we are ready to spark our Bunsen burner. Connect the tubing from the burner's gas inlet to the gas nozzle. Sometimes, strain in the tubing can cause the burner to tilt slightly. That is not good. We should always keep our burner sitting upright on the lab bench securely. Next. Close or partially close the air hole by adjusting the collar on the burner to make it easier to light. For the next few steps, it is important to move quickly. Leaving the gas valve open for too long will fill the area of the lab with flammable gas, which is a safety hazard. If the gas has been on for too long, turn off the gas and wait until the gas has had a chance to diffuse into the room, at least 10 seconds. Turn on the gas nozzle to allow natural gas into the burner. Do not turn it all the way on to the parallel position at once. This is to prevent producing a large flame upon striking, which might cause a fire hazard. Instead, we can turn the handle halfway at first and adjust the setting later once the flame is lit. Take the striker and place it over the barrel's opening. Strike to create sparks. It may take four to five sparks to ignite the flame. What should we do if the burner does not light within a few seconds of trying? It is very important that we do not leave the natural gas flowing for too long without a flame. We do not want to cause a natural gas leak in the building. If you are unable to spark a flame after a few tries, turn off the natural gas nozzle and wait a few seconds until the smell of natural gas dissipates. Now, adjust our burner and try again. Once the Bunsen burner is lit, we will likely see a flickering yellow flame. However, we usually want to obtain a tight blue flame, which indicates a stronger combustion reaction and a higher temperature flame. To adjust the flame, we turn the gas nozzle to control the supply of the natural gas, 
or adjust the air intake by twisting the collar of the burner. Which parts of our assembly can we use to adjust the size and temperature of the flame? Now that we have a nice blue flame, we can continue with the experiment. Whenever we are heating something using the flame, we should always place the sample to be heated at the end of the inner light blue part of the flame, because this part of the flame has the highest temperature. During the experiment, we should never leave our flame on while unattended. If we need to step away from the workbench at any time, we must first turn off the gas nozzle and ensure that the flame is extinguished. To disassemble the burner, first, turn off the gas nozzle. This will extinguish the flame. Please be careful when handling the equipment as it may be hot from our use. We can stabilize the burner by its base to avoid touching the hot metal. Remove the tubing from the gas nozzle at our workbench and from the gas inlet on our burner. It is very important to handle hot materials with caution. Which of the following describes the safe operation of a Bunsen burner?